All right. So, hi everybody. I am the Doula Darcy, and we. I am here with my friend Krista, who is um, another postpartum doula, a dear friend of mine, also and a uh, trainer for Dona for postpartum doulas. And we are both committed to um, helping get more postpartum doulas out there in the world working. So Krista trains them. I help them with their marketing and, you know, social media and all that stuff, the business and the marketing side of being a postpartum doula. But we're both very passionate about getting all families the postpartum doula support that they deserve and want. So we are here today to talk about that little time crunch. Um, once you've finished your training and you're super pumped and super excited to get going, but it can be very overwhelming <laughs> to get started. Um, you know, there's so many questions. So we are here to answer all those questions. And um, so type your questions in the comments. Awesome. I see that Jen is here, Karina, Lee, um, M.A. Goldman. Yes. So people have found us. That is great. So I've been a postpartum doula for 10 years. <clears throat> Before that, I had my three kids. Um, and before that, I worked in marketing and advertising for 10 years. So now I use, so that marketing experience helped me get through this phase of overwhelm and get my business running. And I replaced my corporate income kind of faster, I think, than most postpartum doulas do. So now I'm using all that skill and expertise to help other doulas. I'll let Krista introduce herself. So Krista is one of the doulas in my area that I reached out to um, 10 years ago. Mm, yes. So hi, everyone. I'm Krista Malte. I'm an advanced postpartum doula with Dona International, as well as a postpartum doula trainer for the same organization. And I am also an advanced lactation counselor and the owner of Relief Parenting Respite and Resource Center in Hampton, New Hampshire. And as Darcy said, I have been a doula since officially more than 15 years now. <laughs> and I am so grateful for the partnership and the collaboration that, that Darcy and I have had over the years because it's really helped um, elevate everyone in the area, right? Just all doula support. It's been really great to be able to have somebody to, uh, to work alongside. And so we're excited to be able to help other doulas get started and get out there. Yeah. And speaking of Elevate, you just were interviewed by the USA Today Network. Hello, uh, Marketing Win. That was amazing. Uh, yes, that was really great. And yeah, we got then WBZ News Radio came. And so, yep, marketing works. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. But that's what my husband and I, he's in marketing too. And we always say that we're like, it's amazing. Marketing actually works. So, so congrats on that. I haven't talked to you since I saw that, but that was really awesome. Um, so, all right. I want to start with the, the most common question that I get from people that are in my postpartum doula academy or just even in my free Facebook group, which is the doula marketing group, by the way, if you want to find that and join. Um, the number one question I get from people at this stage that have finished their training and they want to get working is, when do I build a website? When do I make a Facebook page? When do I start an Instagram profile? And my And the general feeling tends to be, and I understand this, I remember feeling this way, that you can't do all that until you official, officially like have your business name registered with your state and you have your certification, but that's really not true. You can um, start all that as soon as possible. And the sooner you do, the better. The sooner you're out there spreading the word that you're a postpartum doula and you're here to help, the better off you're going to be. You know, you need to start letting people in your area know that you're you're that you exist you're here what a postpartum doula does how you know how that we serve families um, so the sooner you can start creating those social media profiles the better and you can just say that you're a trained postpartum doula you can always go back and change it once your certification does come in um, another reason to get your website up and going is that Google, um, the longer your website has been in existence, the more Google's going to promote it. So if your website is brand new, Google's not going to let go to have it show up in Google searches. It wants to make sure that you're a credible 
source. So the longer your website's been in existence, the more Google is going to show it in searches. So the sooner you can get your website created, the better. And it can be very simple. It can be one page with all your contact info. That's all you need. But the sooner you can get that started, the better. Um, so Krista, what would you say is your the number one question you hear from trainees? Uh, yes, very much to echo what you were just saying, Darcy. I think the one of the biggest concerns that doulas have after their training is how do I get clients? Now what do I do? And so I try and during the training, during the time that I have in workshop with, with participants, start to talk about the strategies, getting out there and networking, but it's very much in line with what you were just saying. In order it's kind of a chicken and an egg scenario, right? In order to get those credentials that everybody's seeking and feeling like, okay, that makes me legit, you have to be able to work with at least three families. And so in order to have uh, those three families to have experience and practice and get those evaluations, the families need to know you're out there. So it is very much like this push and pull for a lot of people. And so I encourage uh, doulas when you're first starting to figure out what your name is going to be um, it, and be thoughtful about that. I know, Darcy, you have um, a blog specifically mm. about like how to, to get your name uh, chosen and what steps you could do for that. And that's a great place to start because once you have your business name, then you can set up your social media or you can print out business cards or make flyers, get your landing page on your website. And then when you're talking with people in your community, it's easier for them to then go back and vet you and make sure, yes, this is a legit person. <laughs> it, you kind of become real once you, you have something tangible that families and other professionals can go back and look at you for. So yeah. That's usually one of the biggest questions is like, okay, how do I get those clients to get to that certification process? Right. I know. And I always say that you don't exist until you um, have a website. Like no one is going to hire you to come into your home until they have vetted you online. So if you don't exist online, then um, you're not going to get. Um, hired. So um, <clears throat> Charlotte is asking, and this is another very common question, uh, suggestions on the best website builder to use. I always suggest birthing your brand. And I just put a, a link there. Um, if you use coupon code doula Darcy, you'll save 10%, but they have website templates for doulas. They're beautiful. They're easy to use. They will make that you plug in your own information. They help, they will make it for you. You will have a beautiful functioning website in a matter of three or four days. So they are amazing. Um, and then let's see, Lizzie wants to know, okay, at what's after creating all the social pages, websites and showing up there daily, still needing to get clients to book. So the next step is networking, 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 networking. So, and I know Krista and I are both Dona doulas. So I know, but this is true for any, no matter who you trained with, but I know Dona asks, has you put together a resource list, which is a very, um, excellent exercise in, because it's ultimately networking. You know, if you're pulling together a list of resource sources in your area, um, this is a way to network. So this means connecting with all the other doulas, connecting with all the other birth professionals, childbirth educators, massage therapists, prenatal yoga teachers, post mom and baby fitness, teachers, mom and baby music, mommy and me music classes, everybody that's working with the same audience in your local area, you need to get to um, networking with them, find out how they serve clients, tell them how you serve clients, build your resource list. And um, I think networking with other professionals in your community is the best way to get clients um, because that's like that word of mouth marketing. When someone hears like, oh, my, my chiropractor recommended this doula, they're going to go check you out on 
social media or your website, but then they'll give you a call. Like if you came highly recommended from someone that they trust. So once you have all the social media and website set up, networking is the next thing. What would you add to that, Krista? Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's that whole phrase about it's not like what you know, it's who you know type of a thing. Really like making the connections with other people is really essential because, and, and it can feel overwhelming. And I saw somebody in the comments that said like things just feel really daunting and overwhelming to like get through and like get yourself out there, especially if you're, um, you know, making a big career shift. And so I think like all things, just breaking it down into smaller bits. Um, I, I think with the networking component of things, make a clear plan, right? So start with, okay, this week, I wanna reach out to five different professionals, right? And then actually make the plan and follow through and do it. And I think a really big part of this is how you reach out to those other professionals. So do the work upfront of checking out their websites, looking at their social media profiles, you know, and really, um, getting to know what makes that business unique so that when you reach out, you're not just like, oh, hey there, birth doula, uh, could you please just, you know, tell me all about how you got your clients and could you refer them to me? Thanks. Um, that is not going to be nearly as effective as if you say, oh, hey, birth doula, I noticed that you specialize in VBACs and I'm building my resource list. I'm a new doula in the area. I'd really appreciate being able to learn more about your services and um, gather some of your uh, business cards so that I can share those with my future clients, right? So you have to give the other professional the heads up that, yeah, you're serious about this and they'll know you're serious about wanting to connect and that you are legit by um, doing that work up front. And so I think that that's a really big component about uh, reaching out with other professionals and then following up. So yeah. even though there might be like a hundred different birth professionals, if you develop a relationship strongly with those five people, then before you know it, 10 years later, you'll be on Facebook live with them doing an awesome how to like me and Darcy. <laughs> Exactly. Yes. So I think that's a actually a really great point is we tend to think like, oh, I made a website. I post on social media a few times. Uh, I'm not getting clients like I stink at this. <laughs> and it it is, you know, marketing and networking. It takes time. You have to build relationships. You have to build trust. And the other thing is, it's not like we're selling coffee or something that some people need every single day. You know, people are seeing our social media posts uh, when they're not pregnant yet. But, you know, maybe in six months from now, they will get pregnant and they'll remember or then they will have continued to see your Facebook posts. Um, so it's like you don't make one Facebook post and people hire you. You make Facebook posts for days and days, for months and months and months. And then at the moment that someone's, you know, 35 weeks pregnant or whatever, when they're ready to hire you, that's when it happens. So there's a lot. So you, I always talk about it. Like you're building a foundation with your business. You, you make your website, you start consistently. You don't have to constantly post on social media, but you do have to be consistent. Um, and people need to see and hear about you multiple times before they reach out and book a, a consult never mind book, reach out and hire you. So um, don't give up, just keep taking the next step, keep going. Um, and I think, you know, I can't stress enough that what you said, Krista, about networking and following up, you know, I hear from people that say, oh, I, I emailed the birth doulas in my area, none of them responded. Well, maybe they were at a 40 hour birth and they were, you know, got a hundred emails while they were there and they, you know, can't respond. Like don't view one non-responsive email as, you know, like, well, that's over, you know, send, you know, a couple of weeks later, reach out again in a pr nice professional way. And again, the way I can't stress enough what Krista was saying about 
um, you know, asking them about their services and framing it as like, I want to tell people about you and here's a little bit about me, but, um, you know, keep reaching out when you haven't heard from someone um, and don't give up. So um, uh, in the chat here, um, Jessica was asking, how can we network with COVID? Because emails, yeah, I think that's a really important question for sure. COVID has definitely changed the approach. We just aren't generally kind of popping into stores as much as we had been or trying to like connect. And so, um, and then as Cecily um, pointed out, like sometimes just making a phone call. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because, you know, 10 years ago, that's what everybody did, right? We had phone calls. Now it seems really kind of unnerving to people to be like, okay, I'm going to call somebody. <laughs> but it's a good way to just kickstart that, that conversation in the dialogue. So maybe it might go right to voicemail because everybody screens their phone calls now, right? But what you could say is, um, you know, just checking in and saying, you know, I'm, I'm a new doula, love to connect with you. Is there a time that we can meet? Because as Darcy said, everybody's busy. You know, if maybe somebody's going to birth or they have a hundred emails or whatnot. And so like all things, just making a plan, following up with it. And then like, Google reminder yourself, oh, in two weeks, don't forget, follow back up. Thanks so much. It was great meeting with you. And there's lots of great local resources too. So wherever you are, um, you know, check out places like your chamber of commerce or women's, you know, business groups and that kind of stuff. So that that way um, you have different avenues of learning and connecting with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, so I think email is great. Um, and then, you know, if the email goes well, then you could do a zoom coffee chat, um, and build it from there. But, you know, the other thing I always say to new doulas, like skip the OBs, skip the pediatricians. Like, I think obviously we tend to think like, Oh, OBs and pediatricians, that's where the pregnant people and new mom, new parents are. Um, but, um, they're too busy and they don't need to network. Like they're, they, they earn their living without having to network. Like they just have plenty of patience. Network with other small business owners like yourself that are vested in networking. So other doulas, chiropractors, um, acupuncturists, massage therapists, yoga teachers, like all those other people that get the point of networking and they'll be open to it. So they'll be open to having a Zoom chat with you if you are, as Krista said, promising to promote their business to the people you talk to, you know, they're in that for their, that exchange. So I've been encouraging people, you know, all along, but especially now with COVID start, we, Krista and I, um, in this area, we have a great private Facebook group for our area birth workers. And it's a great place to ask questions like who's available for this due date or who's the best, you know, I don't know, prenatal chiropractor, who do you guys recommend? You know, we, we, you know, chat within the Facebook group, but we had pre COVID, we would have events where we would all get together. But if there's not a Facebook group in your area for birth professionals, start one and invite people. And that's a great thing. Like when you're emailing people and reaching out, be like, Hey, I'm starting this Facebook group as a way for us all to connect and promote each other. Please join. Um, so I think you get more bang for your buck in terms of networking from other small business owners who rely on networking and word of mouth referrals too. Um, so, all right, Diane has a question about for you, Krista, about this donor certification packet. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me that I we should connect for sure. Let's I will make sure that after the Zoom, I uh, I send a, a message to you for sure. Thank you for following up, Diane. Awesome. And someone else, I'm gonna share the website builder that I so someone asked about free website builders, and I tend to not recommend those free like Wix and Weebly um, website builders because I mean, it as like, I want to uh, tell sorry. people about you. Google, um, Google does not uh, scroll those sites and feed them into search results to be very um, 
specific. So it's worth, I think I'm all about grassroots marketing and not spending money on advertising. Um, but I do think you need to spend money on a website. Here's a little um, bit of them. Sorry, I don't know why, Becky, it's not letting me reply. Hold on. And but while you're doing that, Darcy, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of uh, jump in with that as well. You know, with any new business or with any new um, career, right, there are going to be um, expenses up front. And one of the, the really positive things about being a doula is that we don't have a huge amount of overhead. It's so if you're going to start any new business, right, you would have to kind of set aside a certain amount of money and think about where you want to prioritize and focus that. And having a quality training, having, um, you know, a, a website, at least if just a basic here, this is who I am, some marketing materials that you might be able to hand out, like a, some business cards or a flyer or a rack card or something, you know, in the, the long-term scheme of things, you know, if you're charging, let's say $25 an hour, right, you're generally going to make that money back probably in a couple of weeks worth of work, right? It doesn't, so, you know, in just framing it that way, that investment upfront can be challenging, but long-term you're going to make that back and you will likely make that money back much faster if you have the quality upfront. So that's something that I encourage everybody to consider. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, and so Christine says, how much money would that be? I think, well, with birthing your brand, you can get a website for a couple hundred dollars and it will be beautiful and fully functional and show up in search results. And I think that's a great investment. And then you can go on Vistaprint and make 50 business cards for like 20 bucks. I mean, and that's all you have. It's like 250. Yeah. I think it's like 250 cards. <laughs> and that's another thing I want to talk about. I hear, I talk to so many people that are like, oh, I don't have the perfect logo yet. I don't have the perfect this. I don't have the perfect that, or I don't know what to do. Like get those first 250 business cards or rack cards from Vistaprint and you can make a change. You'd spend $20 on that. You can always change it. You can, um, you know, it, it, you can always change your website. You can always change everything. It doesn't, done is better than perfect. You are not going to help families. You're not going to work as a postpartum doula. You're not going to snuggle babies. If you don't have a website, if you don't have rack cards, they don't have to all be perfect, but they do have to be done and they do have to be out there. Um, and you do have to do that work of networking. I can't, um, stress that enough that um, getting out there and doing the work is an absolute requirement for being a postpartum doula. I mean, unless you're going to join an agency um, where they'll do that for you and just give you contracts and give you clients, that's great. Other than that, you know, if you have to start your own business and you have to put yourself out there. And I, uh, everybody laughs when I say this, but I'm a huge introvert, but my passion for supporting new families had to, um, <clears throat> supersede my anxiety about networking with people in my community. Um, so that's my biggest advice to you is that, um, you got to get out there. You got to make the website. You've got to put yourself out there. Um, and that is the key to being a successful postpartum doula. And to kind of go continue with that as well, it's um, it's one of those things that practice makes progress, right? Mm -hmm. In, like any new skill set, going and sharing your elevator pitch or putting yourself out there a little outside of your comfort zone, it, it becomes easier the more you practice and do it. And having like a network of supportive people, you know, in, especially within the birthing community, right? If you can go and make those connections, if you can go back to the group in which you were training with, um, connect again with different mentors, it's going to, um, feel a little less scary and you have some of that like 
um, encouragement and motivation to keep moving forward. And um, to speak to that, something that um, people have asked me about for quite some time and just in this past year I've started doing is essentially like an eight week um, formal mentorship to work through the certification process. Mm -hmm. And so if you are trained, if you've taken a, a postpartum doula training, and again, I'm a, a postpartum doula trainer with Don International, so that's really the lens in which I'm looking through. But to move through those particular elements and requirements of certification, that is, um, I've gotten nice feedback from, from the participants in that of, you know, helping to have a bit of a community to feel a bit more secure and to be able to bounce those questions off of, of like, okay, well, I might not be ready to like, go out there and do my elevator pitch, but maybe I'll start working on um, writing my elevator pitch or mm -hmm. writing my essay or building my resource list and then making a plan, right? So having some structure and accountability for that. Um, so I can, I'll share that in the chat as well. Yeah, and that's, I love that you have this program because it's so common for, I hear this all the time that people are like, oh, I did my training and then it took me two years to fully get my certification. <laughs> um, and that's fine. I mean, we all have little kids and stuff going on, but more of the time, a lot of time is that you're not getting it done because you, you, you get lost. You don't know the next steps. You get overwhelmed. Next thing you know, a month has gone by, like doing that program with um, Krista, like, boom, you are committed. You get it done in eight weeks and boom, that's eight weeks faster. You're out there serving families. Um, so Nolene makes a great point. She's saying all these business expenses are also tax deductible. So that's another, that's a huge point. Thank you for saying that Nolene, that once you are working as a doula, any money you spend on your business reduces your taxes and ultimately helps you out. So it, again, these business investments are so worthwhile. Um, she also says she's fully booked consistently. She's super grateful. She met Dula Darcy this time last year. She took one of my trainings with my excellent mentorship. Oh, awesome. Nolene. I know. And Nolene even like got on a private jet and stuff. So with a client. So um, yeah, so Nolene is talking about the Postpartum Doula Academy, which is my mentoring. Um, <laughs> it's, she says it only took her 15 years to get certified because she was busy working. That's great. <laughs> um, but she did it. But she did it. Yes, she did. Um, so the Postpartum Doula Academy is my three-month mentorship program with, focused on that marketing side of things. So this is the hand holding, locking arms with me and 10 other postpartum doulas to get your business launched and out there and get clients coming in. So people who join the postpartum doula academy say that, you know, the cost of that, it pays for itself because it helps you get, you know, you get sign one contract and you've, um, you know, reimbursed yourself for the training and then it just goes from there. Um, but the Postpartum Doula Academy is a three-month program where you work with me and 10 other doulas. Um, we have a small Facebook group where you can get connect with me and the other doulas daily. We have a Zoom call every other week for um, you know one-on-one -on -one time to talk specifically about your business, to learn from the other doulas. We have a guest expert every month, and then we have a whole library of training videos on all aspects of running a successful postpartum doula business. And you have lifetime access to those training videos. So you do not have to get through that in three months. Um, and then I'm adding to it all the time as new guest experts come in and I teach on other subjects. So if you join the postpartum doula Academy tonight, you can join us tomorrow. I'm doing a training on using Instagram to reach local clients. Everybody says, oh, I started an Instagram for my doula business, but I'm only followed by other doulas. <laughs> so if that is you, join the academy and you can get in on this deep dive training on how to use Instagram to connect with local pregnant people, not just other doulas. Other doulas are great, but you need to, you know, Instagram is such a powerful tool when you use it correctly to find local clients because they are scrolling Instagram all the time. So um, I will put the link 
to the postpartum doula academy. Um, when does your next accelerated program start, Krista? Um, on Wednesday. So Wednesday, wait, which is in like two days. I'm like, what day is it? I just finished doing training. <laughs> so, um, so this this Wednesday um, is going to be the the next eight weeks together, and then um, it will likely be held again probably in the fall because everybody gets busy during the summertime. Um, but always feel free to reach out to me um, at early parenting. So you'll be able to, to make those connections. And I, I would say another thing about uh, you had asked initially with the Zoom, what are some of the biggest questions that I get? And um, I think another big component of this is just the confidence building. And so this isn't necessarily one particular question, but I just want to like take this opportunity to say, you have the skills and even if you haven't you know finished like gone through your training or finished your certification yet the fact that you are feeling called to do dual work says enough about like just showing up and you know being there and helping and so like combining the the business aspect of things combining the marketed side of things combining the certification process that's just going to help further you get to this, like get connected to this calling. Mm -hmm. I just want to point that out. And yeah. I was just reiterating this to the doulas in my training earlier today. Um, we can, we're generally our own worst critics. <laughs> and so, um, you know, if you are willing to show up at a family's house with an open heart and open eyes, and, you know, think back to your training, you know, you, you have the skills and you're able to do it. And so that imposter syndrome that you and I, Darcy, talk about with doulas all the time, it can be really paralyzing. And so if you're kind of watching this right now and you're thinking to yourself, yeah, I want to do this, but mm -hmm. you please know that you, you don't have to do it alone. There's plenty of people who want to cheer you on. There are so many families out there that need help, especially right now because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so um, yeah. get out of your way. <laughs> yes. I guess well, <laughs> imposter syndrome is huge. I mean, we're laughing about it, but we it's so easy to finish your training and then say to yourself, like, oh, my God, I don't have enough experience. I don't have enough training. I better to go take more training before I can help somebody. But I always point out like that the one like huge doula study for, with the Guatemalan people giving birth, like that doula study wasn't even doulas like talking or touching the birthing people. Those doulas were sitting on the other side of the curtain. They were, and they weren't even doulas. They just told the birthing people, there's a woman who's given birth and she's sitting on the other side of the curtain. Like, she's not going to talk to you. She's not going to do anything. She's not going to look at you. You know, you can't see her, but you know that she's there. And those people had better birth outcomes. So I always joke, like, we don't even have to do anything. We just have to show up and we do make it better for people. So imagine if you show up and wash their sink full of dirty dishes. Imagine if you show up and hold their baby so they can get a nap. Like at the end of the day, <sighs> Our job is not that hard. <laughs> I mean, it is, but it's not like you can, if you've done your postpartum doula training, you are ready to um, go out there and start serving. If someone asks you a question that you don't know the answer to, you can tell them, I want to look this up. Um, so, but I can guarantee that you'll probably know the answer to their, you know, everybody asks the same simple questions over and over again. Um, so um, I'm glad you brought that up about imposter syndrome. I also want to answer the question about, you know, I, with Dona, you need to get three certifying families. Everybody asks, how do we find those um, three certifying families? So I always say, reach out to the other doulas in your area. Tell them that you've just finished your training. You're looking for certifying families. Do they know of anyone looking for low cost doulas? You know, if they're more experienced doulas, 
maybe they don't want to work with a lower, you know, someone that can't afford their full rate. So they'll refer you someone who's looking for a lower rate doula possibly, or, you know, reach out to the birth doulas. Birth doulas know the people that want postpartum doula support. Um, I think the quickest way to find those three certifying families is by connecting with other doulas that, you know, they know who's pregnant right now. Um, you know, connecting with other people, they'd be like, oh, you know, be like, oh, I, we know these people that are pregnant and do five months from now. So connect with the doulas in your area. What would you add to that, Krista, about the three certifying families? Um, that, you know, I think the the monetary aspect of things gets a little bit um, tricky for a lot of, of doulas, you know, that like, how much do I start charging and whatever. And so regardless of where you end up you know, whether you charge or not for those three certifying families, I just encourage you to think about like, how is it going to be mutually beneficial? The families are going to be getting your care and your expertise. And whether you feel confident in that or not, you're still offering a really valuable service. And so if you don't feel comfortable charging something, instead of like underselling yourself by saying, oh, I'm going to do a cheaper rate, Instead, I encourage you to just think about like what is mutually beneficial. So perhaps you could offer your services in exchange for, right? So not like, oh, I'm going to charge a lower rate, but I'm going to do this in exchange for testimonials or pictures for my website or a video of, you know, a video testimonial, whatever it might be, in addition to completing the certification evaluation forms, right? So it doesn't necessarily have to be a monetary exchange, especially if you're feeling hesitant about, you know, where you stand uh, in this early experiences. So just finding a way that um, you're going to feel valued because the work that you're doing is valuable. And to echo Nolene um, had put in the uh, chat here that active listening, anybody who knows me or has taken a training with me knows I talk about this all the time, right? It's just about like coming back to those listening skills and, and again, practice makes progress. <laughs> yes. I love that. That's so true. Um, I'm putting my cheat sheet, um, cause I want to, you can get a free cheat sheet on how to start getting doula clients. So, and part of that is like, make a list, make your resource list that you need for your training. Um, and, you know, cross off who have you emailed, who have you heard back from, who have you had a, you know, Zoom coffee chat with, and just keep, you know, every week set a goal, like, okay, I'm going to reach out to five people this week, or how many ever people. Um, consistently, you know, chip away at that list. And I love this. Karen said she did her training family in exchange for references and photos. That is an awesome idea. Oh, sorry, Mike is randomly just starting music. This is um, nice music. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that is a great idea. I've had a few people that I always say, if you are going to, you know, whether you're working at a reduced rate or for free or even full price, you know, have those first few family, have every family you work with write you a testimonial. But if you are working at a reduced rate, you know, that's a nice way to be like, could you please write a testimonial? Um, and then as I say in the postpartum doula Academy, sprinkle that shit everywhere, <laughs> put those testimonials on all your websites in social media posts. Those are super valuable. Karen, that reminds me of, I, I've had other people that have done their first few clients for, you know, and, Maybe one of the parents is a web designer and you get a free website built out of the deal. That can be another great way. So see what, you know, see what you can leverage in those first few client relationships. All right. I think we hit all the biggest, um, most common questions about getting out of this overwhelm period. But I think a big piece of this um, and for me personally, this is how I remember driving home from my training, being super pumped and couldn't wait to just start. I was, I was chomping at the bit to just get in there and start helping a new mom and a new baby and new family. And I woke up the next morning and I was like, well, wait a minute, 
you know, I can't just go on monster.com or indeed and find a postpartum doula job. And there's not a line of pregnant people at my door. It, it was like this realization, like, Oh, I have to like start a business. I have to like market myself. Luckily I knew how to do that. Um, but I know so many people don't, and it's very overwhelming. So that's why I started the postpartum doula Academy to give you a, a container to build your business in with saving you time, money, and energy by having, you know, my expertise, you're going to get going so much faster and easier and ultimately save yourself time, money, and energy. Um, and that's, you know, as we said in the beginning, that's our whole goal. There are so many babies being born. There are so many babies being born right now in this pandemic. I mean, we joked about it a year ago, but there has been a baby boom from this pandemic. And these families need our support more than ever. Um, you know, talk about, I mean, we were having babies in isolation before now, even more so. So our work is so important and I don't want marketing to be the thing that gets in your way of not doing that work. Um, and Krista doesn't want to let, you know, you getting frustrated by the certification process <laughs> be the thing. So please reach out to us, join our programs, ask us questions. Um, we want to help get you out there working. I know, I wish someone would do a study on how many doulas there are that have been trained that don't end up working because of marketing. And, you know, to me, marketing is easy. <laughs> so, um, that it's, I, um, it frustrates me when I, I hear that, that of doulas that give up or go back to other jobs because they're not earning what they need to earn as a doula. So I want to help you earn what you need to earn to support your family as a postpartum doula. Um, and saving the world. Ultimately, you know, I think postpartum doulas are going to save the world. So I want you out there working. And if here's the thing, if you're off back at your waitressing job, your accounting job or whatever job you have, then you're not helping a family. So I want to help you earn your income by being a postpartum doula. So shoot me a message if you're interested in joining the academy. I have like six spots left for this session. Um, and Krista, do you want to talk about your sure. accelerated? So um, if for any of you who have yet to take a postpartum doula training, um, I will be posting all of my upcoming dates probably in the next couple of days uh, for the remainder of the year. And so I would love to get to know you and help you as you're going through that training process. And then if you have questions or concerns about moving through the certification process. If you'd like some um, mentorship and guidance and accountability group support, um, then please do uh, reach out and let me know, like I said, the next um, eight week program for the accelerated certification process is going to begin on Wednesday. And then, uh, yeah, please always reach out because as Darcy said, um, we want you to succeed and the organization wants you to succeed and become certified and go help families. And so in order for that to happen, um, you know, find out what your barriers are and know that you can reach out so we can help you through those. <laughs> Janice says, I want to sign up for both. Awesome. <laughs> Love you, Janice. Janice is Hi. <laughs> so Janice is great. Yay. Awesome. So yeah, so we are both, uh, you know, send us messages on um, Facebook, Instagram, um, Sweet Rose. Uh, yes, I will send you someone on Instagram is asking, I will send you the link. Um, I was going to say reach out to us via social media or email. Um, we're always here for answering your questions. I have my free Facebook group called the doula marketing group where I'm always in there giving marketing tips. That's a great place to join. Um, but yeah, so we're both, I always say super approachable. So reach out to us with your questions. We're here to help you. And, um, we hope that this has been helpful. Yeah. Thanks everyone. Good night. Good night.